Welcome to Designer Digital's bi-weekly tip, March 13, 2015. This week, working with blendable layers in Photoshop and Elements, Part 4. Katie Pertit's blendable layers are a new concept in digital scrapbooking. Each blendable layer comes as a set of PNG images that you can layer and customize. Each set you purchase is like getting an entire toolbox of borders and overlays and images that you can use again and again. With complete flexibility, you can use each of the layers separately on a different project, or you can mix and match them to create something completely unique. This is the fourth in the series of videos in which we've demonstrated various ways to use the blendable layers. Using these techniques and adding in your own creative twist, you'll be able to use the blendable layers to create customized digital photo art. In the previous tip, I showed you four techniques for dramatically changing the appearance of the layers. But in this segment, I'll show you a few techniques for making more subtle alterations to the appearance of the layers. Begin by following the stacking process in the first tip of the series. Using the blending modes, you can get creative effects on the blendable layers. Select a layer that you'd like to change, and then change the blending mode, which is set to normal at the top of the layers panel. I'd like to blend these leaves into the background, so I'll choose the layer, and then change the mode from normal to something like vivid light. With this technique, you can blend two layers together, or you can blend layers into the background. You can also use the blending modes on a product like Katie Pertit's Grunge Overlays No. 5 to add texture to the blendable layers. Open an overlay and drag it onto your blendable layer document. Drag the overlay until it is one position above the layer that you'd like to add texture to. Change the blending mode of the overlay to something like overlay or soft light to add grunge to the image. A very simple way to make a subtle change to a layer is to reduce the opacity of the layer. So select the layer that you'd like to work on. For the sample, I'm going to choose this little bird layer. Locate the opacity slider at the top right corner of the layers panel. Click and drag it to the left to make the layer fade into the background. The more you drag the slider over, the more transparent the layer becomes. To hide part of a layer, you can use a layer mask. Select the layer that you want to alter, and then locate the Add Layer Mask icon in the Layers panel. I'm going to select the Butterfly layer, and then locate the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel in Photoshop. In Elements, you'll find it at the top of the Layers panel. This feature was added to Photoshop Elements 9. If you're using an earlier version, you'll need to upgrade to use layer masks with this technique. Click the Add Layer Mask icon, and you'll see that it adds a mask to the layer that you've selected. Go ahead and click on the mask, and then change the foreground color to black by pressing D on your keyboard. Check to make sure that the foreground chip is black. If it isn't, go ahead and click on it, choose black, and click OK. Next, get the brush tool. Choose a brush from the brush picker to paint away the portion of the layer that you want to hide. I'm going to choose a fuzzy round brush. Click on the page using the brush to make that portion of your layer disappear. So now I have eliminated that one butterfly from the layer. Try reducing the opacity here in the options bar for a more subtle effect. Knowing these four techniques will give you more options for personalizing the blendable layers to fit your design goals. Thanks for watching and be sure to check back in two weeks for the next Designer Digital's tip to find ways to complete your page using blendable layers.